It's just, it's absurd. I have friends like, we need to charge more for our gigs. Like, no, there's retired dentists and doctors that don't play that bad. They want to make money. No one guarantees you a career just because you got a degree in it and spent 10 grand on a Mark VI doesn't mean we have to not enjoy our ourselves playing in public because you decided you have to make a living at it. Should I not use Expedia because I'm hurting travel agents? That's absurd. Yeah. No, no, no. It's absurd. I, I, uh... Damn it, Josh! You got me all mad now. I, that's what I, I was just hoping I could poke eventually until I got a nice, nice, nice. Yeah, reaction. this is just—it's this is nothing new. This is just Thursday for me. No, I, I I know exactly what you mean. I really do. Um, which is why I was so interested in getting to chat with you. Um, I there's one thing I really wanted to to check in with you on. Um, and so you kind of hinted at this before when we were you were like addressing what it's like finding like online courses and uh there's this like this thing that i've been thinking about is like thought leaders versus like uh like a public intellectual like you know like like the difference between a philosopher and someone that like just talks and everyone listens to him because everyone listens to him um and i i'm, I'm not i'm very interested to see where you're going with this so, like, <laughs> essentially like how would you say like you, you you pull up Google and you're like saxophone. I wanna I wanna do something saxophone. I don't know anything else saxophone. How do you find like what's the? I don't want to name any. I, I don't want to name any names. But like, what's the difference between knowing that you're getting scanned and knowing that you're getting digestible knowledge that will improve yourself as a as a musician? Um, like. Right. How do how do you tell that online? Yeah, because like everything's a pretty every there's there's plenty of pretty packages and some of them cost money and people are spending that money. And yes, it's just like, what is the like, there's these like pseudo intellectual saxophone gimmicks that are taking people's money or offering them time and it's not real and they're not getting anything out of it or they're thinking they're getting something they're not like. Like what you said very truthfully about like the Abersol books, they, they give you a set that you can use to practice. But it's They're a valuable a tool. Set. Yeah, it's just yeah. a tool. Um, yeah, exactly. And the idea that you can, oh, we'll buy all my 45 volumes and then this is gonna get you there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you sound pretty good, but if you buy the next volume of PDFs. Yeah, don't you know I think you're missing? Like, that's, it's just this one more. Yeah. You know, I, I will never be as, widespread. I never wanted to be the McDonald's mix saxophone mix studio. Uh, I didn't want to be huge because those, that means you get the people that like, just tell me, give me tips. The minute someone tells me I need some tips, I know I don't want to touch them with a 10 foot pole. I'm so proud of my studio because they are deep thinkers. They're very smart. And if I said like, I'm going to Trent, I'm going to transform your playing with these five tips would switch me off because they could smell that kind of nonsense a mile away. They're incredibly bright people. And so I, I got a lot of people subscribing to my service when I said like, this is a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of time and you have to trust in the process and you're going to be frustrated and overwhelmed. And uh, I'm here to walk the path with you, but it's not an easy path and there's no tips and there's no wasted time in practicing because everyone's like, you need to practice, just do these five things. And so like, I say that out loud and like, I get really, a lot of British people, they can like the American hogwash, they just like, no, no, no. Um, so like, yeah, so I mean, it, it whittles down the people that I get that like, yeah, I know this is a lifelong thing. I want to enjoy the process and not feel like I'm so lost that I have some guidance, but I know he's not going to give me five tips to, to transform it or just that one exercise that, you know, and so I lose a lot of people because I'm not as clickbaity, but I don't want those people to begin with. If someone says, I need tips, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, no, I don't, I don't want tips. You know, like I, I'm not gonna give you, I can't boil it down. No, that's all, uh, framing it that way is so, uh, no, that. So that's I'll it. lose many thousands, many thousands of clicks but I think what I gain is I connect with the kind of, I connect with my people yeah, yeah. who I, I'm just humbled by every day. Those, those incredible people that I work with that I call my students. I think that's really what I'm noticing like as time and technology advances and as now we're able to access like everybody across the world and you can take a lesson with whoever you want, but um, it's, it really is like the, the teacher learner relationship 
is should be so niche. Like you should be able to find the, the, the right person, not just the person. Like everyone goes to this person. You got to go to that person. But it's a matter of like melding with the person that you're you're working with. Right. And a lot of online teachers, passive income is the dream. People want passive income. I would be bored. If I had more time, I would do what I'm doing. So right before I got on with you, I had a Zoom call with my student. I have weekly office hours from my virtual studio. And I'll have anywhere between 20 and 60 people on, a, on an office hour. A couple hundred at the end of the month hangout. But, um, you know, just Zoom call just during the work hours, I might get 50 or 60 people. I love it. I adore it. I have at least one hour a week. We usually have a master class and an office hour. And so a lot of the big places, they just don't have that kind of contact. They try to pretend like there's time is so valuable that they couldn't possibly, you know, fire up Zoom once a week to answer questions from the unwashed matches. But I actually love it. And I think, like you said, what there's, I used to be stressed about competition. And now I realize like, if, if I'm worried about competition, I'm not, I'm not worried about serving my students. Like that's just the wrong waste of energy. I need to be, like you said, what is my niche and how can I do this niche better? Yeah. Um, yeah.